This video is brought to you by Intego's Mac Premium Bundle X9. Yo, what's going on? Sam here, welcome back to another video. Recently, I did a hidden features on the iPhone, so I wanted to bring that today to the Mac and show you 15 plus things that I don't think you've seen before. The Mac is so much more complex than the iPhone. I had a lot of fun with this one, so if you're excited for this video, it does seriously help me out if you drop a like down below, warms my heart, and hit subscribe so you stay up to date on the latest Apple news. Let's go ahead and jump in with number one. So if you own an Apple Watch and you sync it up with your Mac, you can not only have it unlock the device to authenticate without needing to use Touch ID or a passcode, you can also have it unlock certain parts of the operating system, which is my favorite application of it. Every time I used to go into system preferences to unlock the little lock here, I'd have to type my password, which could take you know a few seconds if it was a longer password. Now with your Apple Watch, you simply double click the side button and it will let you in just like that. It is an incredible feature and it's also super convenient to be able to do that just to open your computer. Next up, you probably know how to screenshot already using Command, Shift, and then the number three, but you can do a lot more with screenshots in Mac OS. By using Command Shift and the number four, you can actually drag it out to screenshot a very specific portion of your screen, or Command Shift five gives you a load of additional customization. So what you can do here is actually record a video on a specific portion of the screen, or use a more like granular screenshot selection tool to get exactly what you want. There's so many different options here, and if you ever need to get that perfect screen grab, Command Shift five is definitely the way to do it. Moving on, I showed you this in my hidden iPhone features video and it also works on the Mac. You can track flights inside of Spotlight Search, but you can also do math. You activate it just by command space or the spotlight icon in the menu bar, and then you can start doing pluses and multiplications and divisions and even subtractions here on the Mac. And you can also track flights. So just type in an American Airlines flight and your Mac will tell you exactly where that flight is, where it's going, and when the expected departure and landing times are. Uh, that one's a bit more niche, but like the math, I kid you not, I use this one every single day. Apple has a fun feature baked in. If you ever want to input the Apple logo, you actually don't need to like search for one online and then copy and paste. By tapping on Shift, Option, and K using the keyboard, you'll notice that's a common trend on the Mac. There's so many hidden keyboard shortcuts that are super convenient. You can input an actual Apple icon that will show up to anybody else that has an Apple computer or an Apple product. I don't do it very often, but every once in a while, you know, it's fun to throw that character around and it's cool that it's like right there baked in by default. Similar to that, you can also input any emoji you want through another keyboard shortcut. Just tap and hold on command, control, and space. So like right down the row there, and then you have your entire emoji picker just like you do on your iPhone or your iPad. It's not as convenient for me to like swipe and scroll through emojis here on the Mac as on my iPhone, but anytime I need to get that perfect emoji in a document or in a text message, you can press command, control, and space and pull up that emoji picker anywhere in Mac OS. Next up is a lifesaver if you ever copy and paste anything. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes, you know, as a university student, I'll need to copy and paste a quote for a term paper or just a general analysis that I'm working on. So usually when you do that, from Wikipedia or an actual reputable source, it will paste the style that you copied. So if I could, there's highlighting, it'll put that in your document. And so much of the time, I don't want that. There's actually another option called paste and match style under edit that makes it actually match your current style rather than the style that you copied from. And since I learned about this like three years ago, it has changed the way I copy and paste because I also set up a keyboard shortcut to make paste and match style my default. So every single time I copy something online, it pastes it in the format that I wanna put it in by default rather than the stock format it came from. Uh, it's incredible, you gotta give this one a try if you don't try anything else. Next up, if you have a Mac made in recent history, or the Magic Trackpad that Apple has come out with, you can actually force press on that to do some specific actions. And while I'm writing, one of the most important things I always wanna do is make sure I'm not overusing the same verb. So when you force touch on a character, it will pull up the dictionary or any relevant links or content for that word and show you not only the definition, but also synonyms, antonyms, even like, if you, you know, force touch on a movie, it'll show you some details about that movie. It's sort of like a mini spotlight search built into the Mac natively 
and it's really handy. Uh, I use this all the time and it saved me so many Google searches. Next up, if you find yourself doing a lot on your computer, you might have multiple windows open at the same time. And sometimes it's hard to figure out how to get back and forth from them efficiently. I mean, you could click on the icons in the dock or click on the windows themselves. But what I like to do is called command tabbing and command tabbing allows you to switch quickly from program to program. Now this one's pretty well known, but I wanted to put it in here just in case you didn't know. Command tab makes it so much easier to go from window to window, similar to using multitasking on your phone. Now keeping your Mac safe, healthy, happy, and clean after you get it is another issue entirely. And that's why I partnered with Intego and their Mac Security X9 bundle to make sure you guys are protected and your Mac is working at top notch at all times. This bundle is pretty dope because it includes five different applications to help you manage your Mac in nearly every way you don't think about normally managing your computer. The first step is the Virus Barrier X9. It's award winning antivirus software that does automatic scanning. They can do manual scans. If you ever think you may have encountered malware, it's going to tell you if there's something on your disk that shouldn't be there. Net Barrier X9 is a two-way firewall to show you incoming and outgoing traffic to make sure that nobody's trying to get into your computer or access files, especially when you're outside of your home. And you can even block ingoing or outgoing connections to make sure that you're protected. Content Barrier X9 allows you to monitor what your family's up to. So if you have kids that use the same computer as you, you can see exactly what they've been looking at to make sure that they don't come into contact with questionable content. The most satisfying by far for me was Mac Washing Machine X9. You open it up and it scans your whole file system and shows you your biggest files, any duplicates, and I felt so much better after running this just one time. And personal backup 10.9, make sure that all your files are backed up as they should be. Right now, there's a really good deal going on, only $34.99 a year for a Mac, and you can get protected on so many different levels. I don't work with a lot of software companies because I don't like their stuff. I really like what Intego has done here. They're a trusted name, trusted brand. You guys can get started right now. Check out my link down below. Next up on your desktop or pretty much anywhere else in the Mac file system, if you ever want to expand a file without fully opening it, you can simply press the space bar or use the force touch trackpad to expand it. And I also use this one constantly. I used to always, like in the early days of the Mac, always double click to open up a PDF or double click to open a picture. And that would always take a second or a second and a half to actually load it up properly. Well, with Spacebar, you can just do a mini preview of anything you want to look at. And it makes navigating the file system like 10,000 times more efficient than having to open everything individually just to see if that's the thing you even want to look at. Now, let's say someone does send you a PDF that you want to do more than just preview. You can actually mark it up right here without even opening the native Mac preview app, which is pretty nuts. You can do everything from insert signatures to completely fill out a PDF document using text boxes. And this is all native Mac software. You don't require any special PDF annotation software anymore. Everything is built in. So next time you get a contract, you don't have to send it to some sketchy website online. It's probably going to steal the data. You can take care of everything you need to in preview on the Mac, and that's just scratching the surface. Now, following that, if you do have the newest 16 inch MacBook Pro, I wanted to include this because it is exclusive to this MacBook only. And for the very first time on a MacBook, you can actually adjust the refresh rate on the screen. Now, we don't know why Apple waited so long to add it to the Mac, but instead of having it always locked at 60 hertz, which is like 60 FPS basically, you can actually lower that down to 59.94, 50, 48, or even 47.95 hertz. And if you've never messed with it before, it's pretty cool to see because you don't realize how much you appreciate that 60 FPS screen until you put it down just a little bit to 48 or 50. At the very bottom of your display is your dock. And everybody knows about it. You use it to launch all of your applications. But did you know you can actually reposition it by right clicking or dapping with two fingers on a trackpad and then selecting position on screen? left or right, you can actually move your dock and free up some space because it sort of makes the dock smaller when it's on the left or right side of your screen. Now, I personally don't prefer this, but if you've never tried this out before, it can kind of change the way you organize your windows and work, and it's definitely worth a try. Jumping up to the Mac menu bar at the very top of your screen, you've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings, which everybody knows is how you connect to Wi-Fi networks or Bluetooth devices. But by holding down the option key while clicking on one of those, you get a ton of like secret options that uh, you know are very hard to find elsewhere. So you get this whole other menu while doing so that will reveal a lot of different statistics about the network, like its IP address, the security you're currently running, and very similarly, you get other options in 
Bluetooth as well. Now, practically, I haven't found a lot to do with this, but sometimes it's fun to look at and I don't know, you could go up to a friend and say, hey, look at the secret menu on your Mac that they never knew existed. So right now you're watching this video on YouTube and actually on the Mac, you can use YouTube in picture in picture. While Google has refused to allow this to happen on the iPhone or the iPad, it's completely possible and has been for some time on the Mac. Just right click or tap with two fingers on the video once and then a second time just like that and you'll see the Apple specific menu for enable picture in picture pops up. And now you can drag that window around the screen wherever you want. I find this really useful for video podcasts because usually you'll wanna work on something else as you watch it, but maybe wanna glance over for a visual from time to time. Now, while we're in Safari on YouTube, you can actually add icons to your tabs. They're called fave icons, or I like to call them fave icons. And you go to Safari preferences and then tap on tabs right here. And at the very bottom of this list, there is show website icons in tabs, where before there's only text to read now you can see the icons for all the websites that you're browsing so it might make it like a second or two faster to get to the content you want to get to because there's a picture now and I don't know if that's gonna make our attention spans worse or better but it makes it a little bit easier to find what you're looking for in Mac system preferences more broadly there's a lot of options to choose from here and unlike the settings app on the iPhone that always presents you with the same set of data and options you can remove things that you're not interested in just by clicking on view and then clicking on customize and a check mark pops up to nearly every option except for Apple ID and family sharing that you can now choose to not see. So just uncheck what you never use and then when you hit done at the very top, similar to like rearranging your home screen on your iPhone, you only get what you wanna see. Split View was introduced in iOS 9 on the iPad and it allows you to run two apps side by side. And you can actually do the exact same thing on the Mac. Just press and hold on the green portion, like the expand arrow right here, and it will automatically pop up with this tool set right here. So enter full screen, tile window to left of screen or tile window to right. And then you could have Safari on one side, but Pages or Microsoft Word on the other side if you are working on a text document. This works nearly with all applications on the Mac. And rounding out this video, we have Launchpad, which is probably one of the coolest looking portions of Mac OS, just because it blurs your background and it makes it look like the home screen of an iPhone. I'd actually love that blurred background design on the iPhone. Well, on Mac OS, just like on the iPhone, you can actually delete apps straight from here, like GarageBand or Numbers or anything you've downloaded from the Mac App Store. Now, if you have downloaded that application from from the internet, you will have to go into like Finder and then applications to get rid of it. But if you got anything from the Mac App Store that you're no longer interested in using, you can delete it right here, just like you can on your iPhone. So those are over 15 hidden features on the Mac that I hope you enjoyed. Apple has not talked about many of these before, so I hope it helps your workflow get a little bit more quick, a little bit more efficient. Again, check out Intego's Mac Premium Bundle X9 to make sure your computer is always running in tip top shape. That's all I have for you in this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did drop a like, hit subscribe for more, and I'll catch all of you in my next video.